Now suppose we have a firm whose long and average cost curve looks like this. And suppose that for some reason the firm is currently producing the quantity of output that happens at the lowest point of that long run average cost curve. We can then go to our isoquant graph where we put labor on the horizontal axis and capital on the vertical and include in that graph the isoquant that corresponds to this level of output. Now if the firms had time to adjust its labor and capital, it will have adjusted to an input bundle that lies on the cost minimizing ray. In other words, it will be located at a tangency between the ISO cost budget and the ISO quant. And it will have chosen this much labor and this much capital. Now suppose the firm wants to increase how much it produces to some quantity x out here. That means it wants to move to a higher isoquant, the isoquant that corresponds to that level of output. But in the short run, the firm can't change its level of capital. So in the short run, the only way to reach this isoquant is to use the current level of capital. So the only way to reach it is to choose this production plan. And that's not a cost minimizing production plan because all the cost minimizing plans lie on this ray. So while in the long run the firm's going to end up here, which will then give us the long run average cost, in the short run the firm is producing at a production plan that's going to be more expensive. So if we count up all the expenses, both the short run cost on labor as well as the expense on the fixed amount of capital and any recurring fixed costs, in the short run that amount's going to be bigger than the long run average cost. It'll be somewhere up here. Now what if the firm wants to reduce its output? If the firm wants to reduce its output maybe to some quantity here, then it wants to move to a lower isoquant. In the short run, it's fixed to the green level of capital, so it has to stay at that level of capital, and the only way to reach that output level is to use this production plan. Again, not a production plan that lies on the cost minimizing ray. So in the long run, it'll choose this production plan, which gives us the long run average cost, but in the short run, it's gonna choose a plan that's more expensive. So if we add up the short run costs on labor plus the expense on the fixed capital plus any recurring fixed cost, that's going to be higher than the long run average cost of producing that much. The only place where the short run expense is exactly the same as the long run cost is when we have exactly the right amount of capital. And that's when we're producing this quantity. So when we're producing this quantity, and we're fixed at this level of capital, we have exactly the right amount of capital. So the long run and short run points are exactly the same, and so the short run expense will be exactly the same as the long run average cost. So when we combine this, we can include in this picture a new curve that'll touch the long run average cost curve at one point, but that'll lie above that long run average cost everywhere else. And we'll call that our average expenditure curve in the short run when capital is fixed at the green level of capital that's just the right amount of capital to produce this much output. So we have this new average expenditure curve and you might ask why do we care about short run average expenditure curves that include expenditures on ca capital that aren't really economic costs in the short run. And the only reason we put that curve into this picture is because it will allow us to locate where the short run marginal cost curve lies when you're fixed to the right level of capital for producing this level of output. Because short run marginal costs have to cross short run average curves at their lowest points. So if I include in this picture 
the short run marginal cost it'll look something like this where it has to cross at that lowest point so that will be my marginal cost in the short run when I have the fixed level of capital that's exactly the right amount to produce the output level X, the green output level we started with. So now we have the short run marginal cost curve running through that lowest point and we can even include the short run average cost curve which we know will start at the same point that the, as the short run marginal cost curve fall while the marginal cost is underneath it and then rise. So we'll get a short run average cost curve given the fixed level of capital. Now there's a lot of curves in this picture, way too many for us to keep track of. So let's simplify that picture. We'll start with the long run average cost curve. And then we'll include the short run marginal cost curve that we now know goes through that lowest point when the firm is fixed to this level of capital. So that's our short run marginal cost curve given we're fixed at this level of capital. And then let's include the short run average cost curve that crosses the short run marginal cost curve at the lowest point. So that's the short run average cost given we're fixed at this level of capital. Now we have enough information to identify where the short run supply curve lies because we know that the break even price in the short run happens at the lowest point of the average cost curve where it crosses the marginal cost curve. So this is our break even price in the short run. At any price above that, the supply curve lies right on top of the marginal cost curve, the short run supply curve. And below that break even price, we wouldn't produce in the short run. So now I can simplify that picture even more and just include the parts that we need. We start again with the long run average cost curve. And then we include just the supply curve, the short run supply curve. And that short run supply curve is going to run through that lowest point, but it's going to extend below it because that short run average cost crosses below the long run average cost. So now we have our supply curve in the short run, given that there we are fixed at this level of capital, which will at some point hit the break even price that happens where the average cost curve crosses and then we produce nothing below that. So now we've come up with a simple picture which we're going to use a lot and we've come up with it by thinking about where the marginal cost curve lies if we're fixed at the level of capital that's exactly the right level of capital for producing the quantity of output that happens at the lowest point of the long run average cost curve. Now notice we only have a single long run average cost curve, but we have lots of short run marginal cost curves. There's a short run marginal cost curve for every level of capital. We just use the one that has the right amount of capital to produce this level of output. But there's other marginal cost curves that run all over this picture, we're just not drawing them. We're going to emphasize this short run marginal cost curve because it'll be the one that's useful for what's coming up next in the course.